everyone this is Kim from Colour Passion and today I wanted to do a pour for you an ocean pour and what I'm using is the powders in the new kit that we've created starter collection number one in this kit we have ten powders there's five warm and then there's five cool we're going to be using the cool ones for our ocean pour today and uh, on a separate video I've done one up with the five warm colors so it's we've got the big size containers here so I've already mixed up the resin I'm using the epoxy glass resin because I find that that is a great resin uh, for what I like to use for my art okay so all I'm doing is pouring amounts into the each of the paper cups i like the paper cups because um well they're easy to uh, pour in put into a point and easy for pouring i find so we'll just go through so i've got the five colors plus a white obviously the white for the waves and i'm probably going to have to put a bit out of some of these because it's probably a bit much Actually, you know what? I've decided I'm going to mix up the Magic Ocean and the Green Onyx together. That's what I'm going to do because I can. And you can do this with powders or paste. You can create your own colours. That teal peacock is amazing. We'll put these two in and then we'll have the Creme Deluxe for the sand and we'll have some green luster which is going to be more for near the shore what have we got here that's right doesn't matter if you drizzle a little bit onto the board because it's all going to be covered shortly anyway with resin Let's have a look at what we've got. Um, those two, we've got green luster, we've got creme deluxe, we've got teal. I think we're about there. In fact, so we've got one, two, three, four, and five. That's fine. We'll just put a bit more into this one. Only because I've combined that magic ocean, which is gorgeous on its own, I've got to say. But um, with the green onyx, it just gives it a beautiful deep ocean colour. So all we do now is pop in the powders. Generally, if it's half a cup, I probably put half a spoon. If it's a cup, I probably put like a full teaspoon, like, you know, but uh, for this amount, I'm just gonna put that up. I'm just going to put that amount in and then mix to stir so that it's just well combined. I like to add the powder once the resin's been mixed. I just think then you don't get clumps that are stuck to the bottom, but everybody's got their own way of doing it. Just showing you my way of doing it. And that's what I've been doing for years. Okay, next one, we're gonna use this Magic Ocean. Just got a beautiful little sparkle to it. And the green onyx. And we're going to have a mixture which will give us a gorgeous deep ocean bluey green. Oh yeah that's gorgeous. I actually haven't mixed these two together like this before but I really like it. It's perfect for what we want. Absolutely perfect. If I wanted to make it a bit more greeny, I'd just put a bit more green in, but I'm happy that it's sort of blue with that bit of green. Green luster. Now I'm gonna use this for the color just down near the shore, because as we know, it's always a bit more transparent. So I really don't wanna put a lot in. I'm just gonna put a little bit in and see how that goes.
Got a gorgeous sheen as all these powders have. That's really pretty. And I think it's gonna be perfect for that transparent area near the shawl. Now, we've got the shawl, which is called Creme Deluxe. So, again, with this one, it's so beautiful, but the more you use, the more yellow, or gold, I should say, it's going to go, because it's got sort of a goldy undertone there. So, if you like it a darker colour, then you'd simply just put more powder in. But this is plenty for what we want. So, you can see the concentrated, these pigments, and they will go a long way. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And our Passion Top Cell White. And with paste, you always need to give them a stir before you pop them into your resin because they might have clumped up if you've had them sitting there for a while. And we don't, we don't need a lot. And we just mix that and that will be for our waves. We have two whites, we have a top cell white and a base cell white. Top cell, meaning it goes on top of the colors and it's fantastic for waves, lacing. Uh, you can get some amazing lacing using a torch or a heat gun. And uh, the base is, as it suggests, base. So therefore the colors go on top of that one. It creates a different type of cell. And uh, once you've applied your colors over, you can swipe it, you can heat it, and then watch the magic happen. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to be putting in the colors. So I might just put a little bit of a white, it's not, not too bad. All right, so the darker color blue, which I've mixed the green onyx and the uh, magic ocean, I'm just gonna pour across the top here. That is so perfect for a deep ocean, wow really happy to mix those i'm really delighted it's fabulous okay just pushing it out to the edge there a bit i could do it with my hands if i wanted to but i've got the spatula so let's make life easy today maybe a bit less messy i mean resin is self-leveling so it's all going to level anyhow Okay. The reason why I've got the tape, just to explain that, is it creates like a dam. And I do this all the time with my circular pores. And the reason is you can have really lovely things happening on the top. And if you don't have the tape, then it'll just run off and you'll lose all that beautiful work uh, over the edge. We don't want that. We want to preserve it. Okay, next colour is that uh, Teal Peacock. And that just goes really lovely actually with that blue. Tonally, it's gorgeous. It really, really is. Very happy with it. Okay, so again, we're just whoop, moving it across, spreading it. We need all the board covered. So in about 15, 20 minutes, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to remove that tape because by then it started to sort of thicken up and get to like a, a nice gel state. And then from there, we can, um, the, the resin will roll over the side, but I'll show you what we do when we get to that point. Just wanna smudge that a bit. Sorry about that, not the, not the camera tripod. Okay, so this is that area, as I said, closer to the sand. going to do, I'm going to tilt it so that it all sort of starts to run down a bit this way. Now 
and then I'll put it back again this way just to take it back up then we're gonna put our sand along such a favourite this one for doing ocean sand when ocean pours. I guess it depends what country you come from. I mean ours in Australia is very much like this but of course if you're in another part of the world then it could be very different. I'm just making sure that it's all covered. So as we work with it and heat it, it's going to thin down anyway and come out a little bit more towards the edge. I can just see this little bit here and I just want to put some there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with the propane torch to burst all those bubbles that's been brought to the surface in the mixing process. The next thing is to start making the waves. Actually, I'll put that into a big cup and I really only needed it in a little one. So I'm going to pour it in a little one so that I don't overdo it. Okay. So with this, all I'm doing is I'm going to pour it starting sort of off and long. I don't want it too thick. I think that's fine. I'm just going to hit it with the propane torch just to sort of warm it up a little, make it easier for it to be manipulated up over that shallow side. Okay, here I'm using my heat gun and I'm simply going to push it up. Creating a wave effect in the cells Kind of using it almost like a, a paintbrush, I guess. Just up, down, and along. And those cells, if they do the right thing, guys, should continue to open up to be in that area. Now, I'll do the next piece. We didn't uh, warm that up, but it should be okay. Quite warm here in the summer, which it is now in Australia. to often use both of them. I didn't really want that to come up like that, so... I'm just put that across there. Now yeah, we're just holding that heat gun again. On the lower speed, I think, this time, and see how we go. That's a bit better. Felt it was a little bit too thin. Okay, and then we'll do our final wave across the top here.
propane torch, gas torch, and then now we'll blow up with our heat gun. Actually, interesting, I haven't used this nozzle, type of nozzle before, but it seems to be doing an okay job. Main thing is, you've got the white and you've just got to push it upwards to create a wave-like effect. Never too worried about the edges because when I take the tape off, it's going to pull it off anyway. Pull it over the edges, what I meant to say. So now we'll just let that do its magic, I think. Maybe I'll just put like a little bit more green along here. You can see all the lacing that's happened here. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm just gonna let that sit now and cure, and then we'll come back to it uh, once it's cured, and uh, I'll show you how it turned out. Okay. Uh, look forward to chatting with you very soon. Bye for now. Okay, I'm back. It's been about 10, 15 minutes. So I wanted to go through the process of removing the tape for those of you who wanted to know a little bit more. I'm just removing the tape from around the edge, pulling away because I don't want to pull over the top because otherwise I'll end up with a strand of color and it'll look, oh, shivers, it'll look like a hair right the way across and you don't want that. Then what I'm simply going to do is with these two fingers, I'm just going to glide them around. I'm not pushing the resin up. I'm really just in my mind, you know, I'm just going around covering that bottom quarter, if you like, or bottom third of the edge. And what's going to happen now, because res this resin's got something to stick to, it will glide over and it, you'll always end up with beautiful edges if you do that. Um, some people are not worried about their edges and that's perfectly fine. With me, I like to have nice edges. Now, this is what I've always done. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. So I just wanted to show you that. And um, over time, uh, this will migrate a little bit over the edge, but not too far because we have let it sit until it's thickened up a little. So, okay, I'll see you once this is cured tomorrow. Okay, bye. Hello everybody. This is the final viewing of this piece that we've been working on. I'm really delighted with the way it's worked out. You can see all of the little effects. What I did to get those, I did them afterwards actually. Um, I just had my gloved finger and I just dabbed it over the top. Simple as that. Just to create a little bit of um, interest and these colors i know you're not going to be able to see them as nice as what i can this is in full sun but they are really really pretty i'm just absolutely thrilled to bits with how this piece has turned out and down the bottom here what i did there was once it had sort of got to the gel state it was getting you know quite on its way to um, curing I came back with a heat gun and I just put it on low uh, and just sort of, you know, just keep putting it along there to kind of make it look appear a bit like sand. I was pretty happy with that too. All right, everybody. This is the um, end of the demo for the seascape using the five cool colors out of the Start a Collection Kit number one. Uh, recommend that you get along on our website, colorpassion.net.au and order one for yourself. They are amazing value, 10 colors. Uh, the other video we've got is the other warmer five colors and then we've got the cool colors here. 
have a play because you'll never know what you can do unless you give it a go. Thank you, everybody. Until next time, bye for now.